Hello, it's Joe from the Stephen and Joe Show, also known as Magical, and this is my top 12 tablet time wasters. Number 12, I have personally sunk so much time into, it's Jurassic Park Builder. This is an iPad game, it's also available on other devices as well, but you are building your own Jurassic Park from the ground up. You meet a lot of the characters from the film series of Jurassic Park as you build paddocks for your carnivores and herbivores in your main Jurassic Park, your aquatic park, and your glacial park as well, which is all snowy parks and things. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Really? Come on! Everybody loves dinosaurs, and you get to build your own park. It takes so much time! I couldn't get away from it, I couldn't put it down for quite a long time. Eventually the pay to play element to it does mean it has a roof to how much you can play without getting a little bit bored and without just collecting money on your dinosaurs over and over again. But if you stick out through the earlier levels, it's actually really good fun in terms of the little mini games that come with it, researching for new DNA, DNA getting new dinosaurs. And, but it is a game that links to your social media as well. So if you have things like Facebook and Twitter, it does mean using those to your advantage. Having other friends on board with it as well will work greatly to your advantage and mean you can progress much quicker, which is why it's not featured further and higher on the list. Number 11 on this list is Tiny Tiny Death Star, which is, uh, I've discussed on a previous Stephen and Joe episode, a uh, extension, if you like, of Tiny Tiny Hotel. Tiny Tiny Death Star puts you in the role of Darth Vader building the Death Star, but it's a little bit more like a sci-fi hotel. You invite other denizens of the Star Wars universe to come and join you and live and work on your Death Star as you build your Death Star gift shop, your Death Star workout room, and your Death Star cafe, as well as secretly building your little Imperial levels down below to interrogate the members of the Rebel Alliance for secrets. Number 10 on the list is Crabitron, where you play a giant space crab. In Crabitron, you use your fingers as the pincers on the little crab as you grab flying cars and spaceships and block yourself from various attacks from above and around. Crabitron is a really fun little space sim where you are just a giant monster. It's very simple, but it's very fun, very enjoyable, and very cute. So check that one out as well. Number nine is NetHack. NetHack is an old role-playing game in the style of Dungeons and Dragons. It's very tile-based movement, it's very basic. However, it's been around for a very, very long time and its simplified versions have been put onto the iPad and tablet devices in order for you to run through various dungeons that change every time you start a new game. It's a little bit of a steep learning curve for new people coming to the role-playing game genre and going a little bit old school for people who are fonder of newer genres of games or casual games. But it's it's definitely worth a check out as it's not very expensive. At number eight, it is Minecraft Pocket Edition. The amount of times I have gone on about Minecraft to everybody on YouTube and all of my friends and family probably is getting a bit sickening now, so I won't dwell on it too much, but basically Minecraft is one of the most addictive games ever. It's beautiful and fun. You build anything and everything and it can take up a lot of time, but if you're not sure about it, check out YouTube videos as there are thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos of Minecraft out there. Uh, especially if you look at sort of first day survival videos, it'll give you an idea of the kind of thing to expect. Number seven on the list is Scribblenauts. In Scribblenauts, it's a very basic looking and childlike animation game. However, what you're doing is guiding your character, Maxwell, across the level in order to find golden stars, which are hidden in various places across the level. In order to help Maxwell, what you get to do is to write down the word of anything which springs into your mind in order to help him, whether that be cars, buses, jetpacks, flamethrowers, or Cthulhu himself in order to solve various puzzles. It's a very well thought out puzzle game that gets you thinking as well. It provides quite a challenge as the levels progress on, but it's also good for just a little bit of fun. Uh, it's got replayability as well as going back to the challenges and replaying them through three times without using the same object, which is actually much more challenging than you think, uh, actually gets you bonus stars as well. Uh, it's not very expensive and it's on most tablet devices, so check that one out. Number six on the list is the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Baldur's Gate is a medieval fantasy RPG, which if you're into RPGs, it's been held as one of the best examples of an RPG out there. Its storyline is so expansive and can change dramatically. The outcome of the game is heavily based on the choices that you make throughout the game. Obviously, a choice-based gameplay is no longer a stranger to most of the gameplay world now, but when it was first released, it was very much revolutionary for its time and really took players into much more of an immersive experience. 
Baldur's Gate is a fantastic game and now with its enhanced edition changing the graphics and they've remastered a lot of the audio as well it's made it really beautiful and a joy to behold. In the tablet version of it, the occasionally the controls can be a little bit buggy, but it's such a good game that a lot of that can be very easily forgiven. Number five on this list is Ultima Forever. The Ultima series is a very long running series of uh, role playing game computer games. However, this latest one is very much like Diablo in its top down hack and slash style. It works on a choice between using either online play or playing solo. Both work just as well for each other as your character progresses in a variety of different ways. Not only can you level up in the traditional way of bashing enemies and gaining experience, but also the choices you make throughout the game increases your many abilities, your many virtues in the game, whether that be honor, valor, honesty, and some of it, sometimes it puts those choices against one another, and the game continuously tell, tells you that there are no wrong choices. So it creates a very interesting game to play through in terms of your moral choices, but also in terms of just bashing enemies and picking up some new pants on the way. Number four on the list is Knights of the Old Republic, or KOTOR as most people call it. This is one of the best Star Wars games out there. It's another RPG, which yes, I know I've got a lot of RPGs on my list, but what the hell, I love RPGs. Knights of the Old Republic, again, is one of those games that has been held up as being one of the best games of its type for a very, very long time. And Bioware were a large contributor to it, which a lot of you will know from the Mass Effect series and Dragon Age series of recent years. Knights of the Old Republic still plays amazingly smoothly, it covers a really good Star Wars universe set of storylines, uh, and puts you at the center of the action as you control a Jedi coming into his, his, his or her own. As you choose a character, rather than the original PC game or Xbox game giving you a lot of customiz uh, customizability on your character, what you get is a choice of a limited few characters, but considering they've crammed such a large and expansive game onto such a small tablet device, it's very easy to forgive that and just enjoy the experience that it gives you. Number three on the list is the beautiful 8-bit experience that is Swords and Sorcery. I'm overextending the W's because it does that in the title itself. Rather than being sorcery, it is Sorcery. Uh, so it's worth typing incorrectly. Swords and Sorcery I have told, told you about before on the Stephen and Joe show, but it's a beautiful tablet game. It makes full use of the fact that you are playing on a tablet. It really explains that you should be playing with headphones. The art style is phenomenal using a really cute 8-bit style and takes you through a really interesting story of a Stygian warrior that goes through the steps to fight various demons and creatures along the way and it teaches you about the world in itself. It also serves as a dual EP for the artist Jim Guthrie who plays music throughout the game and the music changes depending on your actions so it's a very beautiful, beautiful game to listen to as well as to watch and play. Number two on the list is the point and click adventure called Beneath the Steel Sky. This is one of a large amount of point and click adventures which have been coming to tablet devices like the Flight of the Amazon Queen, the Broken Sword series and many more. Beneath the Steel Sky was one of my personal favorites from back in the day. Uh, it covers a very cyberpunk futuristic storyline, uh, very Blade Runner in style many people have compared it to. But it's got a really good wicked sense of humor and the point and click style lends itself really well to a tablet device as well. Top of this list is definitely Little Inferno. Little Inferno takes up so much time. I spent hours and hours in this deliciously beautiful and slightly dark tale of a small child burning things in their front living room. This game gives you so many bizarre little creatures, toys, items and bits and pieces to stick in your fireplace and burn. The fire effects are really, really well done. The sound is, is really well captured as well. And the storyline in it, it's worth persevering for. The more things you burn, the more storyline you unlock. The more storyline you unlock, the more you find out about this dark and delicious world that they've put yourself into. With Little Inferno, it kept me entertained for a very, very long time and I could not help but play it all the way to the end. I hope you do the same and I hope you pick it up on any either iStore or other tablet device store as well. And uh, hopefully I will see you soon if you have other games that you've been playing that you feel has wasted more of your time but you've enjoyed it the same. Uh, then please do make a comment below and obviously click like, favourite and subscribe.